And this next one says, what do you feel about karma? I don't like the way that's worded. I don't feel anything or think anything or have an opinion per se about karma. I can't tell you what I feel about it, but I can tell you what I know about it objectively in terms of facts. Um, since I'm not a Hindu and I'm not sitting in an ashram chanting uh, a mantra, sitting in a yoga position with cow manure in my hair, karma means about as much to me um, in terms of its value as goblins, ghosts, ghoulies, uh, things that go bump in the night, leprechauns, elves, etc. It is fiction. It is a Hindu concept. And uh, even though Buddhism is simply uh, Siddhartha Gautama, was simply a uh, Hindu who sat under a tree, mm, had a little bit of uh, extra knowledge. He, he made up the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path, which I have in my library somewhere. But he kept certain crap from Hinduism, one of which is karma. Now, um, karma is, in Hinduism and Buddhism and other Eastern occultic paganism, uh, their concept that all of reality is an illusion and it is governed by an intangible, impersonal field of energy, a force, if you will. I always refer to it jokingly as the great cosmic blob in the sky, composed of equally good and equally bad, 50-50. So you think of Star Wars, you think of the Jedi side of the force and the dark side of the force. Whichever thing you think and speak, you're accessing one side or the other of this force. Now, the idea, kind of like the Eddie Murphy movie, Boomerang, you throw something out there, it's going to spin around, do some damage, and it's going to come back at you. They think that this intangible, impersonal energy field is somehow balancing out reality as we know it in the material world, which they don't even think the material world exists. Um, but so if you do a bunch of bad stuff, bad stuff's going to come back at you. If you do a bunch of good stuff, good stuff's going to come back at you. So if something good happens to you, well, that's great karma you have. Uh, if you do something bad or something bad happens to you, well, that's karma. You had that coming. And it's funny, you know, the same moron who is tricked by the blonde-haired, blue-eyed, white, suburban uh, kid who works at the YMCA that yoga and Pilates are simply a bunch of uh, stretches because the white dude at the, at the YMCA told them that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, this same person uh, is a large segment of American culture Western culture in the early 21st century has a death wish, uh, a sort of morbid curiosity, like the moth being drawn to the flame, where they want to mess with a little bit of Eastern occultic paganism, and so they try to incorporate it. it it's went into the... Uh, <laughs> someone's sending me a text message during this. Why would they do that? Um... Even the medical field is beginning to take certain aspects of it seriously. The business world, uh, government to a degree, every aspect of life, government-run public schools, a lot. It, it's all over the place. Hollywood crams it down your throat. The television crams it down your throat. In January of 2010, I did the uh, broadcast of Full Mention. Uh, it is called Buddhism 101 and Anti-Christian Bigotry in the uh, Establishment Mainstream Media. Uh, you need to find that. Uh, it's out there somewhere. I deal with multiple birds with one stone. I 
I put Keith Olbermann in severe check. And look where he's at today. He's nowhere. Um, in some of his classic tired, unimpressive, uh, anti-Christian, bigoted rhetoric, I ripped it to shreds in a way that would humiliate him and make him cry if he had the guts to stand in front of me and say these things eyeball to eyeball to me about my Messiah and my Bible and my God uh, and my worldview. He doesn't have the guts, so he gets behind a television, reads a teleprompter like an actor, and to this day his show doesn't exist. But I ripped him to shreds and his guest and uh, Buddhism and Hinduism and Eastern occultic pagan philosophy was dealt with at a very introductory level, but it's a fuller treatment than what I can do here. Um, but in any way, so the the concept that um, you know the 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 non Christian person they always struggle with why do bad things happen to good people? Okay, they never get upset or whine about good things happening to good people. Because it's the karma. Or bad things happening to bad people. It's the karma. It's when either bad things happen to good people, which an angry anti-Christian rabbi wrote a book called When Bad Things Happen to Good People. Or when good things happen to bad people. Because this throws the real world that we live in, simply observing it, screws with their little fake world in which they think that it all balances out karma, 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 chameleon. That's what I think of when I hear the word karma. Boy, George, I can't even use the word karma. I understand that it's become popular in uh, 21st century and, and even late 20th century American English, you know, as we're adopting all these other things uh, into our uh, melting pot, uh, the twilight of the Roman Empire, as we rot from the inside, uh, we're incorporating things that have nothing to do with the Western world, Western civilization, Christianity, civilization. We're chasing after that, which is heathen and third world. Um, and it's ultimately going to end badly. I hope not to live to see it. But, um, so yeah. Karma simply is a Hindu concept in which uh, the person believes that this intangible cosmic blob in the sky, this impersonal force is going to right every wrong and it's going to reward every right uh, so that all of the universe is balanced out, so to speak. Um, I, I don't really give two cents to it in terms of, I can't even use the word. There's certain words you can't use because um, you can recognize, hey, I could use this normally. For example, what's a, what's a good example of a word? Um, I can't use the word spiritual anymore um, because when people say, I don't believe in organized religion, I'm more spiritual, they literally mean I'm more pagan. I worship the wind, I worship the trees, etc. I don't need to go to a church. Um, so if I use the word spiritual, not recognizing the monopoly that the heathen thinkers think they're entitled to with that word, but in its classic sense, an educationally challenged listener can hear me say it, interpret it through the glasses that the culture has given them, and think that I'm using it uh, in a pagan sense of the word. And so I leave words like spiritual alone. Uh, what's another one? Apostolic. I can talk about the apostolic faith uh, of the Antonicene fathers or whatever, but since the Jesus-only oneness Pentecostal so-called apostolic cult, which is nothing more than a resurrection of Sabellianism uh, in the end times restoration movement of the late 1800s, uh, from a ancient philosopher, Praxius, it's absolutely insane. But um, if I use the word apostolic, someone's going to think that I'm uh, from the same school of thought as the exalted bishops who reject the Trinity and who think you're saved uh, by the work of Christ on the cross, 
plus your water baptism, plus your speaking in tongues, plus your adherence to a ridiculous legalistic code uh, that is set up by some headquarters and a bishop somewhere in a hierarchical structure of a denomination, very much like the Roman Catholic hierarchical structure, uh, where your Vatican City might be in Tennessee or something. Um, I don't want to be confused with one of those people, so I don't even use that word anymore. Then when it comes to the word karma, I can use it in everyday English um, if I wanted to, but because I don't want to be confused or give credibility uh, to Hinduism, Buddhism, or other Eastern occultic paganism, I leave the word alone. Um, Christians believe in the justice of God. They believe in the grace of God. When um, good things happen to bad people, um, Christians understand that God is a gracious, merciful, loving, personal being, uh, essentially existing spirit, uh, as a spirit. And, uh, yeah, he's the giver and the taker of all things on this planet. And, uh, he is just in and of himself. Um, so we would differ from the Hindu. Like, for example, when my daughter was six, f for fun, I bought her a shirt from Target and it said Diva. Now, if you know your um, world religions, the word Diva is a Hindu word and it has to do with a goddess. Okay? It's a Sanskrit word that literally means the shiny ones and it's female. It's a goddess. Today we we use it to deal with, to, to refer to a high maintenance star or just a lady who's very ladylike. Oh, she's a diva. She's a great singer. Or, oh, she's acting like a diva. She's asking for all the M&Ms to be the same color or this specific kind of water. You know, so it's either a high maintenance girl or it's a, a lady. And I could use it in American English referring to that, but not to be confused with its Hindu use. I just avoid that word altogether. So, I don't have a high opinion of karma. Every time I hear some schmo on television say, that's karma, or someone posting on Facebook, that's karma, I shake my head and I think, my God, this country, piece by piece, little by little, is going to hell in a handbasket. And uh, it's, it's love affair with death and with paganism. People think, oh, I'm just, I'm just... I'm just uh, being spiritual or whatever because I'm chasing after this Hindu experience. Um, chasing after Eastern occultic paganism is not your running towards spirituality. It is your running away from spirituality, in particular the Christian religious worldview uh, revealed by the one true and living God. You're running to the heathen uh, philosophy is your actual running away from the God that made you. And so I'm not always pleased to see it, but I always think of boy George, karma chameleon. Don't make me sing it. <laughs>